celebrating on Tuesday, the Epiphany. And today was the Epiphany Gospel when the Magi make it to the manger after they have followed the star. An Epiphany means manifestation. Manifestation of God's love. And so today, the wise men have made it to the manger, and on Tuesday, all of the Orthodox churches of the world will celebrate Christmas, because that is when the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh were given to the Christ child. New Year's is also a time we make resolutions, isn't it? Who here has made a New Year's resolution? Okay. Are the rest of you just too afraid to do this? <laughs> the late Irma Bombeck had made some memorable resolutions over the years. One, I will go to no doctor whose office plants have died. <laughs> Two, I'm going to follow my husband's suggestion to put a little excitement into my life by living within our budget. <laughs> Three, I'm going to apply for a hardship scholarship to Weight Watchers. <laughs> and four, I will never loan my car to anyone I have given birth to. <laughs> and joke writer Ed McManus has some words of comfort for those of us who are setting resolutions. Don't worry about keeping your resolutions. He says, you only have to deal with them until February, and then you can give them up for Lent. <laughs> <laughs> so why do we make resolutions? Isn't it, for those of us brave enough to put something down on paper, if you will, it's the urge to become better in some way. The urge to have a duo. The urge to start anew and shake off the dust of the last year. I saw a lot on Facebook, good riddance 2014, right? And I also saw on Facebook some of my friends saying, this is going to be my year, 2015. So there's, there's raised hope and expectation that life is going to get better. As many of us who've made resolutions, though, know that they're very hard to keep, aren't they? They're very hard to keep. And why is that? Well, change is difficult, isn't it? Change is difficult, even when it's a positive change. It's hard. But sometimes the living God wants us to change. Now, can we do that on our own power? No. Because if we could have, we would have. We need the power of the living God to help us live lives worthy of God. If you will, we're created with a God-sized hole in our souls, and we are only complete when we have filled that with God. Now, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir here this morning because you're here on this really kind of cold and yucky January day. So congratulations, you're here today. And to be filled with word and sacrament from the living God. But what sort of new life is God calling you to today? All you have to do is ask the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will tell you. For instance, I was asking God what I should do to become more the person God's intending me to be. And, you know, to my horror, the first thing was, please get to the gym. <laughs> You're of no use to me if you become sick and die. Right? Get to the gym and take better care of yourself. So, nervously, I went on the YMCA website, and much to my relief, it didn't work. <laughs> so, I'll be going to the YMCA.
might see a new person tomorrow to <laughs> sign up for that swim class, right? It's the small things. The other thing about my, you know, and I hope you can resonate with this. Who here thinks that they're just too darn busy? That life has become a bore. Right? Well, I know that I feel closest to the creator when I'm creating. Do I ever take time to do art? No. Except for writing sermons, but that's, a, you know. So I've signed up for a um, uh, rug hooking course. I'm going to become a rug hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Little things, but it'll make me slow down. And when I'm creating with my hands, I actually can commune them with God. How is it with you? What is God asking of you this morning? Well, I know through today's gospel, God wants our gifts. That, parenthetically, God gave us. God wants our gifts and has bestowed on each and every one of us tremendous gifts for his creation. I look out today, and I can name your gifts readily. I know my flaw. And the, the amount of gifts underneath this roof right now literally could change the world. You've each been bestowed with such tremendous gifts for God's creation. As I look at you, there's a talent for merchandising. A talent for spreadsheets, God bless you. <laughs> a talent for walking into sick people's rooms cold, right? A talent for answering the phones and making people feel welcome at church. A talent for problem solving. A talent for cooking and keeping people in order. That's a big talent too. On and on and on. Buildings and grounds over there. Money, money raising right there. I look out and I see nothing but talent in front of me. And today's gospel asks each one of us, how are you going to use the talents that I gave you for the kingdom of God? The wise men came giving gifts to God. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh was a very expensive perfume. Gold, of course, gold has its value today. That goes without explanation. Frankincense. In the early church, and to some churches today, the frankincense, which is a type of incense, is burned in the altar as it was in the very beginning of the Judeo-Christian history. And whenever the incense was burned and the smoke was going up to heaven, this was the way that the ancient people sent their prayers to heaven. And God bless Andrew Krzysztofowski, who was a very high churchman, used to come in before all high holy days and incense the heck out of this place. <laughs> and then feign innocence. What, what incense? <laughs> he would say. <laughs> And then myrrh, the most expensive of all perfumes, which was a prefigurement of the death of this child, of what he would do for each of us, that he lived as one of us and he died as one of us. And myrrh was the expensive perfume that bodies were anointed with to take away the smell of the death. And this is what the wise men brought to that in this day. And this gospel asks each of us, what are you going to bring? What are you going to bring to me to manifest God in this world? That is the question for this new year. And may we continue to ask that and to ask for God's help in bringing our gifts to a world who so desperately needs each and every one of you. May you continue to follow the light of Christ 
and continue this year to bring him gifts that only you can bring.